Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that provide context for today's public affairs issues. The Aleutian Islands are situated in the North Pacific Ocean, forming a chain which extends about 1,200 miles west-southwest from Alaska Peninsula towards Siberia to form the southern boundary of the Bering Sea. The Aleutians comprise four groups, the Fox, Andrianoff, Rat, and Near Islands, and constitute part of the territory of Alaska, USA. Of volcanic origin, there are numerous cones on the chain, many of them still active. The Aleutians are the storm pot of the Western world. A permanent low-pressure area prevails there. Cold air masses from the polar regions flow with a shearing effect against the warm, moisture-laden air masses over the Japanese current to form cyclonic disturbances. Because of the Earth's rotation, these disturbances move from west to east, and this meteorological phenomenon constitutes one of the most dangerous weapons in the arsenal of our enemies for it enables the Japanese to operate behind the moving curtain of a storm. In the early days of June 1942, they employed this advantage in an all-out attempt to secure absolute domination of the entire Pacific Ocean. Behind eastward moving storms, they dispatched two invasion fleets against two widely separated objectives, Midway Island and Dutch Harbor an operation designed to break the American line of sea defense upon which the security of the Pacific coast depends. Both attempts failed. American air forces engaged the enemy task force at Midway, achieving an historic victory. And at Dutch Harbor, American land-based planes from secret American airfields swarmed down, seemingly out of nowhere, to knock out one, two troop-filled transports, three heavy cruisers, two destroyers, and one aircraft carrier. In pursuit of the enemy, our Army and Navy airmen flew through storm and fog and hurricane, one-fifth on instruments, four-fifths on luck, 20 hours out of 24 sometimes, through blind passes, by uncharted peaks, down through zero ceilings, not knowing whether the enemy fleet or a mountain lay below, sweating it out for hour after blind hour of continuous flight, and home without benefit of directional beam to land on unlighted runways, refueled, and take off into gray, blind hell. There is no monument to the many who went out and did not return. They fought and patrolled in many instances until their fuel was gone, knowing they would be forced down at sea, but unwilling to break off contacts they had made with enemy forces. Few were alive of those that flew against the Japs in the Battle of Dutch Harbor. If you wish to see their monument, you Americans here at home, look around you. In retiring, the remnants of the defeated Japanese task force landed troops on the undefended islands of Atu, Agatu, and Kiska. We immediately undertook the offensive. So commenced our march out along the bridge toward Asia. In late August of 1942, a large detachment of our troops landed on an island several hundred miles out along the chain and under two hours by bomber from Kiska. The name of this island is Adak, and it is closer to Japan than any other American outpost. Typical of the Aleutian chain, it is windswept, treeless, rain-soaked, carpeted with sphagnum, a flat, spongy vegetation like undersea growth, which oozes water at every step. Since the original landing, the manpower of Adak has been constantly augmented. Where before it was hundreds, now it is thousands. Troops arrive after a voyage that may take anywhere from a week to a month, depending on the sea route. But it took more than a single month to land them here. The months of training that toughened them to rigors of wind and weather, that taught them to handle their weapons, that made them into soldiers. Add those months to the period of the voyage from the States. On Adak, down eastern accents mixed with Texas drawls and Middle Western twangs and Brooklynese. Bookkeepers, grocery clerks, college men, and dirt farmers. That is, of course, ex-dirt farmers, ex-bookkeepers, ex-college men. Soldiers now, as though all their lives they'd been nothing but. <laughs> 